Now, there are lots of hidden assumptions built into the proof we just did. I'm going to talk through a couple of them. We can't break down every hidden assumption. Uh, so at the beginning of this proof or argument, it's not quite a proof yet, but at the beginning of this argument, we said this is a square. We said from the beginning, we're going to build a square off the hypotenuse. Therefore, we know that these the corners in this shape are right angles. So one of the questions we might want to be asking ourselves is how do we know the triangles are going to fit into the corners? How do we know they're going to fit nicely? They're not going to overlap. They're not going to have any gaps. Let's look at an example why we might wonder about this is if we had this triangle, we could build these same squares off of it, and we try to fill in the puzzle, there's going to be these large gaps in the puzzle when we try to put the triangle in there, the triangles in there, and that's going to make our argument not work anymore. And in fact, the area of the two red squares in this case is not equal to the area of the blue square. So we want to break down how we know that these pieces actually fit nicely together. One of the things we know about, right, about triangles in general is that the angles inside of them have to add up to 180 degrees. The reason why would have to be a separate video and explanation, um, and maybe I'll make that someday, but we're going to just take that as something we know about triangles. So anytime we're working on geometry where it's in a flat plane, like a cert on a flat surface, or what we would call a two-dimensional plane, uh, that's a property that all triangles in that space are going to have. If we were doing geometry on a sphere or a curved surface like a saddle, then this would not necessarily be true about triangles. And this is one of the defining features of geometry in a plane. So we've already used up 90 degrees with our right angle. So that leaves us these two angles, x and y. And since we've already used up 90 degrees, we know that these other two angles have to add up to 90 degrees. If we look over at our left puzzle, we see that we have the x and y angles coming together. And since, well, we already know that that's 90 degrees. So that tells us they're going to fit nicely into that corner without any overlap. Now let's look at the other puzzle and how there's some hidden assumptions here. So we said we can think of this puzzle as these two squares, this, uh, these two red squares. Well, the question we might want to be asking ourselves is how do we know that those are actually squares? How do we know they're not maybe parallelograms or a little crooked or something like that? So let's talk about where we can figure that out. Again, we have these x and y angles coming together, and we know that they have to add up to 90. So that gets us a right angle in the corner there. Uh, and if we move this piece here, if you remember, the short legs of our triangles were a long. So that gives us our sides are a, and so we end up with a square that's a uh, shape that is a square, and it's a squared. Now there were a few more assumptions or details we'd have to work through to establish that all four corners are 90 degrees and um, that this is a square, but those are the kind of the big pieces. A similar argument works for this one. Again, we have a right angle in the corner because we brought two right triangles together. And as a reminder, the sides are in fact B because this piece used to be here. And so we end up with B squared. So again, these are just some of the hidden assumptions. There are other details we'd want to work out to really fully flesh this out, but they're kind of the two, some of the big key points. So in the first puzzle, it's given that these corners are right angles. We said we're building a square. Uh, and the thing that we're concluding is we can actually fit these triangles in there because they are right triangles. In the second puzzle, it's a little bit different. Uh, we don't know yet if they're squares, and we figure out that they're squares because the two triangles come together and make a right angle. And therefore we can conclude these are squares and uh, we're able to calculate the area the way we want it. All right, I hope that helped clear up any questions you had about the Desmos activity.